All right, everybody. Hello, and welcome back to a new episode and a new series on Good Company with me, Spacefish. After quite the long while of accompanying this game ever since it really came out, all the way up until this point, the game has finally launched in its full 1.0 version a few weeks ago. And, uh, well, that really kind of prompted me to make the decision that after a good while on a bit of an older version of the game, it was finally time to swap over to the most current version of the game again, get our own company going and, uh, well, get it up to ever-growing heights, hopefully. Or, you know, we may just also go bankrupt for the first time ever, which, fingers crossed, will not happen. But that is where we start off today, and, uh, well, where we also start off with our character creation again, because, of course, everything is now reset, and we will basically be starting at the very rock bottom with all this stuff. So, we will get that going, but before we do, if you're new around here, if you do of course happen to enjoy this episode and this entire series, please make sure to go ahead and smash that subscribe button right down below, that would really mean the absolute world to me. We are very much trying to hit 1000 subscribers currently, it's not all that far out anymore and every single person does help out so, so much. So thank you so much if you did that, but without further ado, let us go ahead and get ourselves configured. Um, I would argue that we are going to go use a male character. We had this one last time around. I'm not even sure this kind of body style was available, but we're going to choose it for once. Um, companion. I like the name Dominator. We're going to we're going to keep Dominator here. I think that's the most. But I do think that we had the same companion last time around. So, um, well, this is the one we always get in the tooltip. So we may as well use this one for once. Um, if you do have any name suggestions, and if it is possible to even change your name after the fact, which I'm not entirely sure, please feel free to let me know down below. And, you know, um, if there's multiple, I guess the most liked comment will win, or alternatively, I'll roll the dice. So, you know, feel free to leave your suggestions down below, and within a few episodes' time, if it's possible to rename that companion, we will go ahead and do that. Now, with that said, let me go and give myself my own name, which makes a whole lot of sense to me. And we are just going to go and browse through some options here. I mean, like, some sort of short hair like that, I guess. Uh, we're not going to go wear any glasses. Um, I do kind of like a little bit of a moustache. <laughs> Somehow, that's... <laughs> I like it. Not like I'm wearing one in real life, guys, but, you know, got to, you know, just have some fun, I guess. I do have to say, I really kind of like this tuxedo kind of style. Um... Maybe something like that to accompany it. Unfortunately, you can't really change the color, I think, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, no options in terms of gloves. Uh, shoes, we will take those so they fit a little better into those uh, pants. And uh, then we can do hair color, skin color. So, well, you know, I mean, I don't want to give you guys the impression I'm that old, which uh, definitely I'm not, but uh, you know, I do have to say, oh, wait, where were we at in terms of. Why has everything got this slightly pinkish hue now? Can I just undo? Oh no. Am I blind? I mean, this is not matching that color, is it? I mean, I do have to say, right? Um, I kind of like the vibe that this character gives off. It's like a little bit like the Monopoly man, I feel like. You know? I, I, I kind of. I don't know. Something I fancy about that, and. Uh, well, if we really wanted to, we could go and give ourselves a little cylinder hat again, but I do think we did have that the last time around. So we're going to stick to this and, you know, just, you know, stick to that colour. And I guess skin is also quite fine, you know, a little Monopoly Man appearance and uh, clothes colour. Oh boy, uh, that's some quite colourful clothing styles right there. Uh, it's also not too terrible. Does the Monopoly Man have a... I'm not sure. We'll stay to what we originally had. You know, we'll, we'll stick with that, and I think that's quite fine. Let's not spend too much time on this. Let's go ahead and accept that. And, uh, well, you can see our company is still very much named Spacefish Limited, which I'm quite, quite happy with. 
And then we're going to go to free play where, uh, well, technically, interestingly enough, we do have all the old saves still going. I'm not sure if we would still be able to play them. I would have thought that we wouldn't. But um, in any case, we will go ahead and start a new game on a new map. We're going to start from scratch. That was the plan all along. So let's go and follow through with it. And Jesus Christ, that's a lot of maps. Holy moly. The guys have been busy chasing carrots. Absolutely beautiful. The amount of maps we have. There's a winter map in there. Silicon Summer, which of course was the last map that we played on in our free play environment. We do have Bloomville, which... I'm not sure I remember that one either. Then we've got Golden Acres, which is also a new one. Circuit Plains. I I'm kind of thinking which one was the original map that the game came out with, because it wasn't Silicon Summer. I'm thinking it may have been Circuit Plains. God, let me know down below in the comments if you actually remember. This game's been out for quite a while now, I guess. And then we've got Timber Town, which is an XL map for one to four players, because of course you do now have multiplayer if you want to. So, you know. Uh, I could have someone messing this stuff up together with me, which may be something interesting to do in the future, but let's not get too carried away with that just now. Now, this map is quite small, and I would love to try it out, but it is quite small. Um, which, what size was Silicon Summer? Wait, this is an S map. I managed to get all products. I, I guess there's more products at this point, right? So, um, there's competitors. Oh my god, there's so many new things to explore in the game, and I absolutely love it already. Um, we're gonna fi fi all find out together, because I didn't prepare myself for this intentionally. If you've been around the channel for a longer while, you will know that this is how I kind of like to, um, explore games together with you. You know, not read up too much about it up front, so we can kind of just all learn and explore the game together, and not just me knowing everything already. I think that makes things a little more interesting sometimes, so that's how we're approaching things. Um... The question being, I mean, honestly, if this map was S, like, we, we took, like, what, 30, 40 episodes to fill this thing up? Quite a long while. I mean, Golden Acres, being an L map, would be quite massive already. And then we've got Timber Town, XL map, one to four players. But it does look quite cool, right? I mean, I would say we stay with a summer map, because, you know, it's quite cool. The interesting question maybe being, can we make it winter when we play in winter? That would be nice. So I'm considering, currently, either Timber Town or Golden Acres, I would say. I think we're just going to choose Timber Town, because why in the world not, you know? If we don't manage to fill up all the space, we don't, but why not? Uh, we're going to just keep it on a normal game, I guess. I mean, multiplayer we're not going to do just yet, and then we're going to have some competitors, which uh, is interesting. We can have a quick look, just to kind of have an idea what competitors even are, and what kind of stats they have, and so... On. So apparently there's three different ones, all like a little stronger or weaker. We've got Linda Beck. Beck family is known for the wholesome personalities, famously small yet efficient production teams, while the relatives specialize in baked goods. Linda followed her obsession with is that not the lady. Oh yeah, right. That's some of the characters from the story, isn't it? It's beautiful. I'm sure the campaign's also been expanded at this point, so maybe that's something we need to revisit someday. Um, but for the time being, let's focus on this. So, uh, conveyor belts can keep the stuff small. Production, finances, innovation, happiness, prestige. Interesting. Um, competitor strength. The setting will mainly affect the maximum production limits and the ranking performance, right? So I guess, junior, senior, seasoned veteran. The new guy. I think we're going to keep it on Junior because it's not the easiest setting, but I don't want to... Ah, oh, yeah, right. We're just going to put it on normal games. We're not going to change anything too crazy because, you know, we're exploring all the new stuff as well. I don't want to get absolutely messed up by that AI within seconds, which will otherwise probably inevitably happen. Now, compared to the aggressivity... Alright. Anyways, um, not better, but faster. React to the player, advanced market phases. Okay, so bites. Competitors also unlock markets. Interesting. No mercy. Competitors will not wait for you. Oh boy. Moderate assets. Okay, and then, you know, all these stats. We're just gonna stick to uh, the normal. The normal game stats. There we go. So, uh, we're not gonna go start it as a. Well, if I start it as a multiplayer. I I don't know what effects that has, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this may not allow us to future-proof ourselves. In case, you know, someday, decide that it's time for some 
first ever YouTube collaboration and bringing someone on board, but on the other hand side, I feel like in that case, we may as well just start a new play through. It's something I'm actually now contemplating with a multiplayer thing. Well, you know, um, in any case, something for the future. Let's go ahead, start that new game and get everything loaded up. Right. So back we are with the first tip of the day. Um, well, you know, yeah, that one we already know. We're just going to quickly zap through these just in case there's anything new in here. Uh, logistics connections by selecting the work zone logistics mode and hovering over the logistics node. Ooh, that is new. Very nice. Very handy. The hovering bit at the very least. Uh, copying and pasting recipes. That is also new. Ooh, so many cool new developments, isn't there? If you want to transfer recipes from one crafting equipment to another, you can pick up the recipe by holding down the control key and left-clicking on the source equipment. Okay, that is very nice and handy indeed. I mean, we're going to use out a ton, I can imagine. Uh, paste the copy recipe by holding down... Wait, so holding down control and left-clicking, then I have it, and then I copy-paste it by holding down shift and left-clicking. Okay. Then we can buy and sell new buildings by clicking the for sale button. That is totally not new. We can extend the zones, which should also not really be new. Just redrawing the rectangle, or as we are used to. Copying equipment is very nice. That's definitely a new feature. Um, control right click instead of control left click, and then we can just duplicate stuff. Well, duplicate in terms of buying it again, but that's very, very nice and handy. Uh, and that one we also already had didn't we? I may have skipped something useful there. You can quickly transfer half the amount of an item by uh, left clicking on it while holding down the control T key. We do knew that and then that and then that we had. Why does it sometimes repeat some of those tips? Hmm. Oh, maybe we need to click. No, if I click don't show this again, it's not going to show the tip of the day again that I see or the entire section. I'm not sure. We're not going to try that just yet. So you can override the preferred input and now put inventories of a crafting table or assembly table in their respective panels. Uh. Uh-huh. Ah. Okay. Ah, so that's for the auto logistics, which is interesting. So you can actually make changes to auto logistics now, which is a good thing because sometimes, you know, Auto logistics tends to become a bit messy if you do want to do more complex things, so that really helps a lot. I think that's a very good change. Uh, you can examine all existing logistics connections by selecting the work zone in the logistics mode and hovering that we had that one already, and that one we also had already, and that one we also had already. Now it feels like there's no new stuff still included. No, there we go. There, there's a new one. Um, Maybe we do need to hit that button, I don't know. When designing on the creation of a connection to satisfy the item demand of a crafting table, the system will always prefer the closest inventory. Oh, you can actually see what the auto logistics thing is gonna do. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, honestly, like auto logistics has made some good advancements. So the system will always prefer the closest inventory in walking path distance that has the required item rules as a source. Okay, fair. So I'm gonna click this now. And we're going to click that there. Okay, so that seems to work. Oh, that is missing a picture, maybe? Um, oh, no, there it is. Yeah, we had that one already. We still had that one already. Uh, you can quickly transfer half the amount of an item. We had that one already. And deciding on the... Despite having the don't show this... Okay, we're done. I don't think we're done. We can get... <laughs> I, I'm a bit confused by that mechanic. But we can about get going. Let's first things first. Pause the game before we go and lose money. Now, holy moly, there is a lot of new things to this interface, I have to say. Also, a lot of things just charmed up, you know? A lot of, you know, well, charmed up visually, right? I think you get the point. Um, we're going to first things first check down here. Ooh. The painting CEO Jimmy is now available to you in all game modes. Hmm, cool. Bolly. Um, CEO Penny as well. I guess that's based on the campaign mode. Divider Vanity. Shiny Panda. Table Production. Okay, I guess we have our construction menu up here, so we can just quickly check through what we have as a baseline. We've got the Tinker Table. Ah. Uh, handheld Assembly Table? I guess that's just a rename, right? This is not actually a handheld, like... I think it's just the Assembly Table that we're used to. Um, this is new. No, well, no. Not really. Analysis research, we know that. A um, lot more decor, most definitely. We've got these dividers, which do seem to take space. But, you know, could make the place look quite cool. 
Um, these take space as well, unfortunately. But you know, with this XL factory, we may have an abundance of space, to be honest. I mean, we managed to jam most of the other products in there. Let's see. Let's see just how many new products there are. I feel there may be a good bunch, and then this is all. Okay, so for starters, there's not too much of anything new. Now, I would like to have a quick peek around here just to see how much we have here in terms of building space. So it extends all the way out to here. There's a bunch of buildings right here. More down there. These are quite long. Oh, wow. This is actually going for quite a... Oh, my. Wow. That is going on for quite a while. There's definitely a lot more buildings than we were used to from the other thing. Ooh, okay. That said, I do have to say it is not quite as... Um... Well... Worryingly big? As I had thought, but it is still quite freaking huge, honestly speaking. So, uh... Oh, lots of room for activities. Most definitely we have a beautiful park in the middle here, which I really, really like. So that's quite cool. Now we just need to find ourselves again. I guess the tab key doesn't work anymore to log back to your character. Okay, here we go. What is that? Hotkey HM? Oh, and that's to rename. Well, I don't know, but you know, if you click your picture, you go and zap back. Cool. And exploring things further, I feel like we're honestly mostly just going to spend this first ex episode exploring new things. Um, we've got an overview of our activities, which is very nice, because uh, you know in the past I tended to miss like a research bit here or something else there. Company goals seems to be new. Assignments, I mean that's something new as well, that's quite interesting. Research points are now here. Uh, is that all research points? Is there different kinds now? Oh yeah, there's different kinds. Look at that. What are those kind of cases for? Intriguing. So there's been, I think maybe it's, no, these are higher tiers. So those are computers. Ooh, I think we just discovered a new product. Okay, and here are the bot chassis and Jesus Christ, look at that. So many new things to research. Power supplies even, which I guess is for the aforementioned computers, is IPUs. Image processing units, right? That makes sense. So if you need to take a picture, I guess you need to have some sort of image, uh, image processing associated. Wow, it's cool. That's all pretty much the same. This is all. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I think this is actually like a bit further in terms of advancements. Heaters. That's new. And then we've got the drawback reductions, which there is a few new things there as well. So quite cool. That's the research tree right there. Um, and that is different kinds of research points, so that's definitely an interesting change. Then we've got success points and discovery points, which I've got no clue what those are. We'll just find out as we go. I guess we've got a happiness score, which is employee happiness. Definitely a new thing. Success point yield per week based on that. So, I'm happy with myself. It's always a good start. <laughs> Gotta go from there. Uh, 325, well, 326k apparently what we started with. And then we have our overviews here. Employee overview. Four starters. That looks quite cool. And I like it. And there's apparently skills even. I like it. Now the employees actually differ. That is something we didn't have before. Previously we just hired someone, right? Like we didn't care. So that's cool. I love that. Really nice. Uh, I've got a overview for our workplaces. And I guess even happiness, how much they earn. I don't know in a bit, so, you know, always great. And then, oh my god. Okay, maybe I've spoken too soon, right? <laughs> this is actually quite uh, intimidatingly big, you know. <laughs> that was the word I was looking for earlier. Like, I feel like this section right here, that is pretty much the previous map we were playing on. And that's already bigger than the one we first originally started out with. So, um... A good five times the size, maybe? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a lot of space for us to fill, I guess. And we've got the blueprint designer, where we can check out... Okay, so we do apparently already have two products available. Which is, no, actually the virtual pet we don't have available yet. Oh my god, a virtual pet. Oh, that is cool. I, I'm... I'm... Nice, we can do a Tamagotchi, right? That's, that's it. Um... 
So that, that's quite cool. That is really a cool product. I love that. I'm really interested to see what other products uh, Chasing Carrots has come up with. Should be awesome. Um, I am wondering if, as previously, there's always two product variants and you only get one of the two. Because uh, if you remember, I think... I don't know quite how it... What sort of examples I could come up with now. There was, for example, courier bots, I think, or cleaner bots if I remember correctly for example so there was always like two products and you would only get one of them on each playthrough so not sure if that's still the same way but that's quite cool looking forward to this market overview which is um, I guess pretty much what we're used to then we had already had the research this is new this is entirely new business development and there's even business expansion whatever that may be I've got chemistry so what does that give us? Is this basically to unlock the tables? Yes. So that's new, and this is what you need the success points for, apparently. First things first, so employee happiness, important point. Not sure what else you get them for. And then just, like, these research points right here. Oh, no, those actually also vary, so that's also. And then you do need that in order to even be able to unlock the relevant tables, I guess. Which is quite cool. And then we can even go and boost some tables at the cost of others and... Okay. That is actually really, really cool. I like that concept. You know, I always like games with a sense of development, you know, the, the advancement, the improvement that you can personally work on and achieve. And this just adds another layer of this to this game, which is great. I'm really looking forward to that. We've got the company ranking. Which I guess is with all our competitors. And, uh, items produced. Any completed crafting process adds one point to the score, be it a batch of components, a module, or a product. The production score gets reset to zero after every year. What are the effects? I'm not sure, but we definitely want to be number one regardless. Oh, and then finances. 6.7 million! Yeah, sure, I will. Okay, that'll be why. But I guess it's, uh, this is revenue. Okay, revenue. Okay, I've got no clue what our revenue was previously. I only know that we made like 100k in profit each week. No clue what it was in a year. Also no clue what our revenue was. Well, we'll, we'll see, we'll find out. Innovation, happiness, okay, so there's like company rankings basically. No clue what the rankings do, but we definitely want to be number one everywhere. Prestige! There we go, we're already in the level. Okay, we, we can basically end this playthrough right here. Moving on from that, we've got assignments, which I've got no clue what assignments are. Uh, we'll have to find out. Maybe that's something that I need to Google. If you already know it, please feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Company goals, which I guess is pertaining to this bit right here. And we can get... Okay, so we can get these success points here. And we can commit to some of these things uh, within a certain deadline. Why is nine days already expired? I basically paused this instantly. That's unacceptable. <laughs> Anyways, um, so... You know, you've got certain goals, craft so and so many modules, have so many batches of components, transport, and have so many products. And then we get these points, I guess, and if we fulfill it, we get a little bit of extra boost. I'm not sure if there's any drawback if we don't, but yeah, so that's quite nice. And then, oh, there's passive effects as well. Look at that. Picking speed. Walking speed. Okay. Cool. We'll have to look at that and actually set some goals. I guess that's quite important to do. Then we've got our financial overview, which is nothing out of the ordinary. There is loans. I don't think... Was there loans before? Either we never needed loans or there was no loans before. Well, that's definitely new. Uh, it does appear that we do have an active loan of 250000 bucks currently. Outstanding. Which we're going to take years to repay because we only have a weekly interest of 0.1%, which sounds beautiful. I'm going to repay that at the slowest pace possible because that, that loan is cheaper than any of these other loans so honestly you know don't want to pay that back and then we have budgets oh right so this is i uh, guess how you manage multiplayer you can give people different budgets that's quite cool company stats and then the manual that's pretty much that so um well, I mean, we're already quite far into the time of this episode, but I do want to take the time with you guys to actually at least 
go ahead and get a little bit of a calculator designed, right? So we have something to start out with. Just a basic product that we can then get going on in the next episode. So, we want to go ahead and make the calculator because, honestly, I mean, that's the only thing that we can actually work on. The other question, how do I unlock new products? Is that also through research? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, is it maybe through business development? I guess it may be business expansion. I've got no idea in the world. If you know how I unlock new products, please feel free to let me know down below in the comments because that would be probably quite important to um, gain knowledge of at some point. For the time being, we can make the calculator. And, uh, you know, as always, if you do want to, you know, just uh, propose some names for the calculator, feel free to do so down below in the comments. We'd love to take some suggestions for all that. I'm not going to finalize the product today and then we can take that on in the next episode. So, um, design seems to be about the same and... Um, Maybe we start out with a small one again, and uh, just some like very derpy looking color. Hi DJ, if you're listening to this. <laughs> one of our Twitch ones for those that don't know. Um, currently it's called the Mind Pure, we're definitely going to make sure to rename that thing. And then we've got the casing, which we've already selected, right? And then we do have the modules, and now the question is, uh, we've got the market appeal here, we've got the feature value here. Oh, we've got the expected features right there. So the only thing that we really need is display fidelity and battery life. So... It's interesting, right? No calculation capabilities or something. The most important bit, display fidelity. I guess we're going to be working with LED arrays on that end, and... Uh, whoa. It's actually... Okay, wait. How much... It's actually interesting, right? Because you can compare. It costs me... Uh, boop, 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 boop. 72 bucks to put another LED array in, and I get another 100 bucks in price from that. So, we're definitely going to go spam those LED arrays in there for an assembly time of 1.9 days. That's quite a long time for such a small product. I guess they may have harmonized and changed a lot about the assembly times here. So, we'll see how that one's going to be going for us. And then we do have the option between single cell batteries or battery stacks, which battery stacks, to be honest, are not really that much more complicated. Uh, there's a battery assembly machine. Look at that. 0 0.05 days. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. There seem to be quite some cool new tails that we didn't have previously. So that should be nice. But uh, generally speaking, I guess we're going to work with a battery stack. Um, guess, I mean, honestly, 1.0 in, in terms of, yeah, I mean, makes all the sense in the world. Uh, and that gets us right to the desired amount as well. So that's a five-star product design right there. And, uh, well, definitely over the minimum feature value, which is also a new thing. Because um, now you do need to have some level of positive market appeal. You can't just get it all out of the park with the marketing like we sometimes did in previous episodes. So that's, honestly, I would say a very sensible change and a good thing to do. Um, but that is then going to be our first product. As previously mentioned, if you do want to give in some proposals for the name, feel free to do so down below in the comments. Uh, for today, we're ending it off right here on that very, very positive note. For starters, in the next episode, we're going to go and finally get our first product worked on. We're going to go get some first components worked on and just slowly but surely try and get things rolling. I'm sure it will be quite interesting also with all the new skill sets from the employees and all the changes that there have been. So very much looking forward to that for today though. We're ending it off right here. I hope you all very much enjoyed that episode. Of course, if you did, please make sure to go ahead and smash that like button right down below for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new around here and haven't done so just yet, also please consider subscribing right down below as well as hitting that bell icon in order to stay up to date on all those future upcoming episodes. But with all those things out of the way, as usual, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I will catch you in the next episode very, very soon. Ciao.